Labar, bro man Span was born with ambitions as a rider. Span, is a notorious crime boss from the west side of Chicago. Big west side! That is linked to dozens of acts of violence and intimidation. Bro man, a leader of the four corner hustlers, survived at least two attempts on his life, including a shooting in 1999 that left him paralyzed from the waist down. Four years after he was paralyzed, Span, survived another shooting in 2003. Bro man's ambitions as a rider continued, until federal investigators finally caught up with him in 2015, following an ill-fated visit to a southwest suburban gun range. As a convicted felon, Span couldn't legally possess or fire a weapon, but he took to Instagram to brag about his prowess with firearms after a trip to Midwest Sporting Goods, a gun range in Lyons, Illinois. He pleaded guilty in 2017 to weapons and narcotics charges in that case, but only after he pressured a co-defendant to deny his involvement when testifying to a federal grand jury. In 2021, Bro Man, was convicted on federal RICO charges that included six counts of murder. Prosecutors argued that Span was behind three murders in 2000, and three more murders in 2003. Bro Man, was convicted of ordering his faction of the four corner hustlers to commit, four murders. In 2000, Bro Man, allegedly ordered the killings of, Carlos Caldwell, on January 19, Maximilian McDaniel, on July 25, and LeVar Smith on April 16. Six months before Caldwell was killed, he shot Span in the chest, when Span tried to rob him. The shooting left Span, paralyzed from the waist down when the bullet hit his spine. Prosecutors said Span, ordered Sammy Booker, a co-defendant who ultimately cooperated with prosecutors to kill Caldwell, but jurors found that the feds didn't prove Span's involvement. McDaniel, was marked for death after Span learned that he was cooperating with law enforcement in the murder prosecution of Span's father, who was a leader of the Black Souls gang. Booker, also killed McDaniel. Smith, was killed because he affiliated with a rival faction of four corner hustlers. Booker and another man, waited outside Smith's house all night, and killed him as he was getting into his car to leave for work in the morning. Jurors also found that prosecutors, didn't meet the burden of proof against, bro man, in Smith's killing. So, bro man, was convicted of killing McDaniel, and of three more murders in 2003. George King, on April 8th, Willie Foots Woods, on April 16th, and, Rudy Cato Rangel, on June 4th. Four corner hustler hitters, Tremaine Thompson, and Jawan Foster, killed King and Woods. This, is a picture of Tremaine Thompson on the left, with Ron Trell, Lil Boss Turnipseed, standing behind him, next to Jawan Foster. Ron Trell, was an aspiring rapper that got his nickname, Lil Boss, because he displayed leadership qualities, and was the heir apparent to, bro man. He even got an opportunity to tour with, Chief Keef, but threw it all away to be, gang gang. He, accepted a 10-year plea deal, in the RICO case against the four corner hustlers. The murder with the highest profile in that RICO case, is obviously the killing of DMX's close friend, and Latin King Chief, Cato, in June 2003. Well, we don't believe you, you need more people. There is a popular misconception that, Cato, and the Flores twins were homies that grew up together, but, there is an age difference of almost a decade. Rudy Cato Rangel, was born in November, 1972. Margarito Flores Jr., and Pedro Flores, were born in June, 1981. Cato, was friends with the twins' older brother, Armando, another member of the Latin Kings. After Armando went to jail, the twins joined the Latin Kings, and took over his drug business as teenagers. For his part, Cato, used some of the profits from his drug empire to invest in, Dinero Records, with his homie from the Latin Kings, Damien Cash. Cato, became friends with rappers like DMX, and Fat Joe. DMX, made Cato famous, when he dropped the, the tribute song, A, Yo, Cato. After Cato was murdered, Damien Cash, and other Latin kings associated with Cato, made millions working with the Flores twins as they expanded their drug empire. So, are the rumors true? Did the Flores twins put out a contract on Cato's life for stealing cocaine from them, or was he the victim of a botched robbery? According to the Chicago Tribune, Cato's mom believes the Flores twins are responsible for her son's death. Mary Rangel said, she doesn't buy the notion that he was killed for the jewelry, he was known to wear. She saw him hours before he was killed, and says the only jewelry he was wearing was a gold and onyx eternal love bracelet that, she, bought him. 
according to the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office, Wrangell, still had on his pricey watch, and bracelet. And, detectives found his necklace, and pendant, on the stairs to the barbershop where he was killed. Cato, was 31 years old when he was murdered. Three months after someone killed Cato, his wife Valerie, took a luxurious trip with, 22-year-old Margarito Flores Jr., his twin brother, and a bunch of friends to Las Vegas, for the Oscar de la Hoya vs. Shane Mosley fight. According to Cato's mom, though Valerie, and Rudy Wrangell were married, another woman, was the mother of his children, and they, lived near Mary Wrangell, and her husband on the southwest side. Damien Cash, and other Latin kings close to Valerie and Cato, like JC, whose YouTube channel has a very positive message that people should check out, describe the Flores twins as gentlemen, not gangsters, and understand, hood politics. Obviously, it didn't take long for, Margarito Jr., to make a move on Cato's widow, but the man was dead, and not coming back. It's understandable for his mother to feel a certain way, but they don't believe that the Flores twins, were responsible for killing King Cato. Martise Shorty Nunnery, Marcus Black Ware, Donnell Squeaky Simmons, and Bro Man were all charged with his murder, not the Flores twins. All were found guilty but Bro Man, who, was acquitted in a bench trial, and eventually released from the Cook County Jail in 2009. Violence, has remained a constant throughout Bro Man's life, and Cato's killing, was not the first murder case that he beat in state court. Police records show that former CPD officer, Jerome Finnegan, was involved in Span's first murder case in 1996. Span, then a member of the Gordy's faction of the Four Corner Hustlers, allegedly punched a woman in the face, triggering a conflict with members of a nearby faction of, unknown vice lords. One of those vice lords, was related to the woman who Span punched. Leaders of both gang factions called a meeting to clear the air, but no resolution came, according to police records. Span, and two other Four Corner Hustlers, then walked to the corner of Lexington and Springfield to wait for the Vice Lords, who, were headed east back to their territory. When their car passed by, Span, and the others opened fire, according to police records. None of the Vice Lords were shot, but the driver lost control of the car, and ran over a 31-year-old city subcontractor, Wayne Lucas, who was laying fresh asphalt nearby. Lucas, a father of five, was taken to Mount Sinai Hospital, and pronounced dead 12 hours later. Span, was eventually found not guilty, but his co-defendants were both convicted, and sentenced to several decades in prison. Finnegan, was the ringleader of a rogue band of CPD officers, who stole hundreds of thousands of dollars from drug dealers, and civilians alike. In 2011, he was sentenced to 11 years in federal prison, after he pleaded guilty to a murder-for-hire plot and tax evasion. His, and Span's paths would cross again, a few years after Lucas' death. One of Span's younger half-brothers, Michael, was arrested in the 600 block of North Avers, a block where at one point, Span, allegedly kept a stash house. After the arrest, Finnegan, and another former CPD officer, Timothy McDermott, were photographed holding hunting rifles over Michael Span, who was lying on the floor with deer antlers on his head, and his tongue hanging out of his mouth. The Chicago Sun-Times, obtained and published the photo in 2015. Michael Spann's father, Michael Smith, told the newspaper in 2016 that the photo could have been a message to, Spann, it could have been a sign to show his brother that they weren't playing. We called those cops, the beat-down boys, they did, whatever they wanted, Smith said. Michael Spann, was killed in a drive-by shooting in 2007, while Bro Man was in jail, waiting to go to trial for the murder of Cato, the first time, in state court where he rained terror on inmates, and staff alike in Cook County Jail. While locked up at the Cook County Jail, West Side gang leader, Big West Side. Labar Bro Man Span, wanted everyone, jail guards, other inmates, the medical staff, even janitors, to know just how much power he wielded. I run this shit, Span, who was facing new, federal charges that accused him of taking part in six killings, told another inmate in 2005, according to records obtained by the Chicago Sun-Times. No matter where you go on this compound, I'll have your shit split. Between late 2003, and mid-2007, the Cook County Sheriff's Office cited Span, reputed boss of the brutal Four Corner Hustlers Street Gang, 17 times in disciplinary complaints, the records show. In one instance, while threatening a corrections officer, Span, alluded to several unsolved murders having been carried out by his gang, according to the records. In all, 
he was found to have been involved in jailhouse threats, violence, and other infractions, an average of about once every two months, between late 2003 and mid-2007, while being held on Cato's murder charge. In March 2004, records show Span, told a corrections officer, your kids, and your family are going to die, motherfucker, and then I'm going to kill your bitch. I'm gonna fuck you up, right now, I'm gonna shank you, the first chance I get. In that case, the disciplinary board didn't punish, Span, but ordered him to undergo a psychological evaluation, records show. Ten months later, Span, was accused of refusing to go back to his cell. When officers tried to take him there, he attacked one of them, according to a disciplinary report, Span, started to use his wheelchair as a weapon, and attacked an officer by rolling his wheelchair back onto the officer's feet and legs, multiple times. Span, eventually was taken to his cell, and the guard, was taken to the jail hospital's emergency room. After his release in 2009, Bro Man's ambitions as a writer, continued. Bro Man, likes to portray himself as an old school gangster. The fact is, his dumb ass, got arrested by doing some, young, dumb nigga shit. Bro Man, was arrested on weapons charges in 2015, after posting pictures of himself on Instagram at a gun range, knowing he's a convicted felon. Who does that? His ambitions, as a rider, officially ended in 2017, when he could no longer call shots on the streets from jail, with the sweeping Four Corner Hustlers Rico indictment, and the arrest of most of his crew. Please, smash that like button and subscribe, as we continue our series, Killing King Cato. <laughs> Well, we don't believe you, you need more people.